the truth sense permanence temporariness density and intensity the truth sense has been blunted in these times by pervasive influences in both public and private life a blunted truth sense leaves people disempowered vulnerable to being abused and manipulated into empowering human predators this entry will lead you to the restoration of your own truth sense which is based on the intuition of the unknown unknown the ultimate sense of truth because it is not a form of knowledge that can be contradicted the entry is only secondarily about the meanings conveyed here more primarily it's about the effect it has on personal consciousness when read or heard the intuition of the unknown unknown is the truth sense against which all else may be measured realized or real nature experienced and known the unknown unknown is as the name clearly states generally unknown among people and when known real nature experienced intuited as a unique paradoxical perception so this section promises something likely to be unique to your experience on truth preliminary preliminary Truth is that which need not be reinforced to be true. Truth is self-validating, self-authenticating, not validated or defined by external references, knowledge, or particular qualities of any kind, and which may undermine but not contradict established knowledge. It is non-mental entirely a matter of intuition of a unique kind permanence temporariness density and intensity people confuse truth with the ability to remember something the characteristic of memory is persistence no persistence no memory people confuse truth with persistence this is a product of their education, which prizes memory and awards to memory the status of truth. Memory is the coin of the realm of conventional education. Intensity is the capacity to penetrate and to change density. Density is the capacity to resist penetration, to resist change. Density is the characteristic of all purported knowledge. Intensity is the characteristic of all insight. Insight penetrates knowledge. All knowledge is temporary. It is of limited duration. It arises at some point in time and then is transformed in time and ultimately disappears. Truth is that from which all knowledge emerges, in which all knowledge exists, and to which all knowledge returns. Because truth need not be reinforced to exist, it is self-existing and perpetual. But it is not a thing. It is that to which all conditional knowledge returns. It is empty of quality empty of form, empty of density, empty of intensity. It is that on which all knowledge depends. It is non-conditional. It is beyond conditional mind. Conceptual mind perpetually seeks something it can sink its teeth into, called knowledge or understanding. It seeks density. People confuse conceptual mind with intelligence. 
Intelligence is the process of emerging insight. It is the process of emergence that distinguishes insight from knowledge. Emerging insight penetrates the perpetuation, the density of knowledge. It may seem to emerge from knowledge, but it is only associated with knowledge by its penetration of knowledge. Emerging insight is always new, not the perpetuation of the old. Only unconditional truth is permanent. All conditional truth is temporary. But the bias of education is to give what is conditional, what has density, what has substance, the status of knowledge, of truth. What is conditional, what has density, what has substance, endures. Everything that endures has a duration. It is temporary. Nothing is permanent. That's the truth. But the tendency to resort to knowledge, to what has duration, to what has density, to what has substance as truth, overlooks the ultimate ground of truth. The confusion between knowledge and truth comes from the bias of life and living towards self-perpetuation. Self-perpetuation is the urge to permanence, to survival. But permanence is misattributed to density, to substance, by the resistance of what is dense to change, by the tendency of what is dense to withstand intensity. But this is not permanence. It is duration, durability, temporary existence over time. Durability and endurance are the prized characteristic of knowledge. Most people consider that good enough, but it is not truth or truthfulness. It is merely durability. Durability is a temporary contrivance. It is not permanent truth. Seeming to be true is a characteristic conferred upon knowledge of durable conditions by the existence of perpetual, formless, unconditional truth. Perpetual, formless, unconditional truth is the underpinning of temporary, conditional, formed knowledge and experience. People intuit perpetual, formless, unconditional truth as the sense of now, but confuse the sense of now with a sense of the moment, the sense of momentary conditions. The sense of now, of momentary conditions, is a product of memory. It is not the eternal now which exists before conditions in this moment fade into perception and recognition. It is the time before our reaction time passes. Memory is the perpetuation of experience. Memory consists of durable impressions of experience. Memory has duration. The perpetuation of memory is its density. The vividness of memory is its intensity. The density of memory is why people's minds are hard to change. Vividness of experience reveals more of it and may make a memory more dense or change people's minds. Intensity of insight is what's necessary to change people's minds. Intensity of insight penetrates the density of memory. However, it also causes new memory to form, memory with density, with durability commensurate with the intensity that led to the new memory's formation. Memory has less density in the young and innocent. That is why they are more easily impressionable than those older 
and with more memories of experience, density. What knowledge and truth have in common is persistence. Their difference is that while knowledge may be durable and may persist over time, truth is perpetual and eternal. It is by means of the attribute of eternality that truth confers upon or shares with knowledge the status of truth, but knowledge is of limited duration. The durability of knowledge is the conditional version of the eternality of truth. It is by means of the attribution of duration that truth confers upon or shares with knowledge the status of truth. But knowledge is of limited duration. It is the density of knowledge, the intensity of experience, that makes it seem like it is the truth, that it will last forever, or that it seems like it is lasting forever, as in, in love forever. Intense experiences seem like they will last forever, or as they or their effects only last longer, but they seem like they will last forever. When you're in pain, it seems like the pain will last forever. Density and intensity obscure and substitute for truth. That is how knowledge gets confused, conflated with truth. Awakening the truth sense. People naively base their sense of truth upon the density of their memory of something. They are naive because memory is only one of the four faculties of intelligence. In basing their sense of truth on the density of memory only, they lack part of their intelligence and are gullible and manipulable by anyone who can cause them to form memories of sufficient density to endure and so influence situations and conditions. Such is the strategy of deception and of propaganda. The counterparts to memory, the other three counterparts that combined generate penetrating insight of sufficient intensity to penetrate the density of memory are attention, intention, and imagination. They generate that penetrating insight not by generating a substitute memory but by combining to form a sense of equilibrium independent from the fixity, the density of memory. It is the equilibrium of truth, which is unbiased by memory, unbiased by density, unbiased by the perpetuation of conditions. It stands free, but not as counter-knowledge. It stands free as the perpetual ground of being that confers the status of permanence on temporary knowledge. This cannot be understood by mental analysis or reason. It can be understood only by direct, self-validating, self-authenticating experience. It is not a matter of opinion. It is a matter of direct testing that anyone with the inclination to do so can do. Resurrecting the truth sense. There exists a procedure or a sequence of subjective actions that resurrects the truth sense. It uses the four faculties of intelligence, each of which consists of two parts, a personal part and an impersonal part, that when activated and combined lead to a transpersonal experience. Both parts, personal and impersonal, are accessible with a bit of practice. However, because of the density of human beings conditioned to regard density of memory as the indicator of truth, the other three faculties, attention, intention, and imagination, must be resurrected and made vivid by sufficient practice to generate sufficient intensity to penetrate the density. 
to do that, we use words whose meanings invoke those faculties as feeling intuitions. Intuition being the common means by which words have meaning, the common experience of language. To the point, here is the sequence. To use the sequence, you read each step in the sequence and then repeat it to yourself, either in your mind or aloud, without reading it. As you will see, the steps involve words that are unbiased, empty in themselves, but that, when combined, generate the experience underlying all experiences, the unknown unknown that makes them all seem to be true or actual. A word in advance. You will pass through the zone of incomprehensibility on your way to that intuition. That zone is the experience you have as you depart from your familiar experience, but have yet to land at your destination. You may feel that you don't know what you're doing, that maybe you're doing it wrongly. It's just a product of your addiction to the familiarity of knowledge, your discomfort with not knowing. You must tolerate that feeling and persist. Don't attempt to reason it out. That kind of reasoning is subject to biased opinion. Do the procedure until you get the experience I have described passing from the feeling of familiarity, knowing, through the zone of incomprehensibility, to the intuition of the unknown unknown, which is the truth sense, the conscious ground of being that underlies all sense of permanence, temporariness, density, and intensity. Do this procedure, when working from the written copy, to a good result before you read the next section. Don't disregard this instruction. Do as instructed. Resurrecting the Truth Sense Repeat the entire procedure until you get intuitive perceptions and know the difference between getting intuitive perceptions and not getting intuitive perceptions. Here follow the steps. Listen and then repeat, articulating each word clearly at the pace and rhythm you hear me do. Imagining, imagining, imagining. Otherness, otherness, otherness. Intending, intending, intending. Difference, difference, difference. Remembering, remembering, remembering. Relatedness, relatedness, relatedness. Attending, attending, attending. Distinctness, distinctness, distinctness. Imagining, imagining, imagining.
otherness, otherness, otherness. Intending, intending, intending. Difference, difference, difference. Remembering, remembering, remembering. Relatedness, relatedness, relatedness. Attending, attending, attending. Distinctness, distinctness, distinctness. Imagining, imagining, imagining. Otherness, otherness, otherness. Intending, intending, intending. Difference, difference, difference. Remembering, remembering. Remembering. Relatedness, relatedness, relatedness. Attending, attending, attending. Distinctness, distinctness, distinctness. Imagining, imagining, imagining. Otherness, otherness, otherness. Intending, intending, intending. Difference, difference, difference. Remembering, remembering, remembering. Relatedness, relatedness. Relatedness. Attending, attending. 
attending. Distinctness, distinctness, distinctness. Imagining, imagining otherness, imagining. Otherness, otherness, imagining otherness. Imagining otherness, imagining, imagining. Otherness, imagining otherness, otherness. Intending, intending difference, intending. Difference, difference, intending difference. Intending difference, intending intending. Difference, intending difference, difference. Remembering, remembering relatedness, remembering. Relatedness, relatedness, remembering relatedness. Remembering relatedness, remembering, remembering. Relatedness, remembering relatedness, relatedness. Attending, attending distinctness, attending. Distinctness, distinctness, attending distinctness.
attending distinctness, attending, attending. Distinctness, attending distinctness, distinctness. that completes resurrecting the truth sense. When doing this procedure by reading it to yourself, you cycle through the steps repeatedly until their intensity builds to a sufficient level to generate an intuitive experience. It's that simple. The sense of truth, as well as the sense of factuality, is a matter of intuition only. It is entirely subjective, not objective. The idea of objective truth, the idea that something is evidence, the sense of proof, is entirely subjective something we accept when we deem evidence to be sufficient. When you have done this sequence sufficiently, you will find your familiar sense of knowledge becoming amorphous, and you will intuitively experience the unknown unknown. Opinion and Factuality what distinguishes factuality from opinion is a matter of integrity. The integrity of the memories we have of how things relate to and fit with each other. That sense of integrity is the intuitive sense we have of how things fit with each other. Without a sense of fit, we have only an intensity of opinion and the density of that opinion. The difference between factuality and opinion can be known only by having experiences of factuality and opinion that contrast with each other, by comparing things that are other than each other. Only direct experience avails. Only direct experience self-validates. Only direct experience self-authenticates. It is, it is beyond conceptual knowledge. It is direct.